Okay, so now for the second part of our um, practice with drawing chemical structures. In our first part, we took condensed structures and converted them into a skeletal structure. And that's an important skill because it is easier to draw skeletal structures, especially if you have to draw multiple structures as you're showing a reaction mechanism or, or, or something of that nature. You need to be able to quickly draw uh, structures. So again, an important skill is taking information learned in Chapter 10 in Gen Chem 1 of drawing kind of structural formulas or Lewis structures and being able to translate that to both a condensed structure and then from a condensed structure to a skeletal structure. So our next um, uh, part of this uh, practice is being able to convert a skeletal structure into a condensed formula. So again, kind of going uh, this way along here. Now this is not something that we generally do in practice, uh, but we want to practice this so it is something that you can actually visualize in your head. <clears throat> and again, viewing back at our sheet that we have here, we're going to be going in this direction. And so taking structures that are drawn kind of in this shorthand notation and being able to visually see how many atoms are bonded there. So again, it's less in practice that we'll do this, that when you look at this molecule, you really see that this is a CH3, CH2 carbon with no hydrogens and then carbon with two hydrogens. Again, that's an important skill to be able to uh, mentally see so that when we see these skeletal structures, we know the atoms that are there. Okay, so taking this first one, again remembering that every end of a line or intersection of two lines represents a carbon atom, we can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms that we see in this skeletal structure. <clears throat> and an important skill in kind of looking at uh, skeletal structures and visualizing condensed formulas is realizing the importance of the number four. And so we can look, for example, at this carbon at the end here and see that it's only bonded to one other carbon. And being only bonded to one other carbon, the three other positions then are taken up by hydrogens, because that's the only atom that's not going to be shown here. So this means that that first carbon is a CH3. If we apply that same kind of analysis here to this carbon, this carbon here is attached to two other carbons. Two other carbons means that the two open spots are attached to hydrogens, which means that that's a CH2 group. So we have one, two, three, four CH2 groups there and then we terminate again with a CH3. And the more of these that you do, you realize patterns. Things like a CH3 group is always kind of a terminal or a capping piece. A CH2 or a CH group is gonna be something that's in the middle. So this is how we'd write the condensed formula for this skeletal structure. And we could condense it even further by recognizing that four of these groups are the same, and so we can write them as a single group with this subscript, subscript indicating the number that we have of those individual groups. Okay, so moving on to the next problem, we can see that there's a portion of it that's identical to what we see here. And again, moving in, we could see that we'd have a CH3, a CH2, and now moving to this carbon, we can see that this carbon is bonded to one, two carbon atoms, and then a third atom in an oxygen atom. That means there's only one spot left for a hydrogen, so this is a CH group. But remembering that things that dangle off of the main chain can be written in parentheses, we can write this condensed structure as CH3, CH2, CH, and then anything that's dangling off of that, we can write in parentheses following it. And then we're going to have CH2, CH2, CH3. Again, less important that we actually spend a lot of time in reality going in this direction, but we need to be able to mentally see this when we see this structure and say that this is a CH3, CH2, CH bonded to an OH, CH2, CH2, CH3. So some of the questions that you might likely see on a quiz or an exam, I might show you a structure and I might point to a certain carbon atom and I'll ask you how many hydrogens are bonded there. And you need to be able to recognize from the skeletal structure that there's only one hydrogen bonded to that carbon atom. Okay, moving a little bit more quickly then through the rest of these. And again, this is not fun because this is not typically how we draw structures, but making sure to draw out all of these structures. 
we can see that we have a CH2, CH2, CH2. A CH, there's only one hydrogen because that carbon is doubly bonded to this carbon. And then we have a carbonyl group that we have here. Moving on again with another molecule here. CH2, we have one hydrogen there because we have an OH group attached. CH2, 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 and another CH. So like this one, we only had one hydrogen because there was a double bond here. And having each of these groups, and I should say I'll draw that out as a CH3, having each of these carbons have an additional exocyclic or external to the ring group, that takes a place of one of the hydrogens. So we only have one hydrogen on each of those carbon atoms. Moving along here, when we have this aromatic system here, we're going to only be able to, again, have one hydrogen per each carbon. You can see I even struggle drawing these all out because it's not a typical way that we write things. We tend, we're used to the shorthand um, notation. So we've got each of these carbon atoms that's part of the ring having only a single hydrogen atom there. I had forgotten that one there. So we've got CH, CH, CH. Here's our nitrogen, CH. This carbon does not have another nitrogen because it's bonded one, two, and then twice to this carbon atom. So there's its four bonds. And then we have a carbon doubly bonded to an oxygen and then an O. H. And the more of these that you do, again, you'll recognize patterns. And things like carbon always likes to have four bonds. Nitrogen likes to have three bonds and one lone pair. Oxygen likes to have uh, two bonds and two lone pairs. And we can see that in two different functional groups that we have here. Okay, moving on here, again, we're going to have a CH3, CH2, CH, and I'm going to draw this CH3 in parentheses, indicating that it's dangling off of our main chain. And then we're going to have a COH. Again, we're not going to be drawing any bonds here, so we don't want to draw that as a double bond. Okay, we're going to write COH. I should have pointed out up here, too, if we wanted to, we could have drawn this group as COOH if we didn't want to draw out um, those atoms in the condensed formula just like we kind of did here. You might see sometimes in what's sort of a condensed structure, this, where to indicate and make sure that everybody realizes what that bonding is there, it might be explicitly drawn out. But again, if we're doing something where we want to type something into um, a word processing program, this is how it's done because you don't need any chemical drawing structure uh, software to be able to do this you would in order to be able to do something like this. Okay, now this one might look a little bit strange because I know some of you have indicated you haven't seen um, uh, notations where you'll see what we call uh, wedged and dashed bonds that we have here. So these bonds that are solid like this are indicating groups that are pointing out of the paper towards you, where these hatched bonds are indicating uh, bonds that are going uh, back into uh, the paper. And so this is just designed to show us three-dimensional structure. Um, again, when we're drawing a condensed structure, condensed structures really don't show us three-dimensional structures. Um, so we're going to kind of lose that information here as we just draw the atoms that are connected to one another. So we're going to have an H2N. This is a carbon bonded to a hydrogen and then another CH3 group. So we'll draw it like this. There's a CH, and then this is off of the main chain. So we'll say CH3 in parentheses there. And I'm going to draw this one like we had shown up here, where we might have COOH. You could simplify that if you wanted even further, and it's not uncommon to see CO2H, both equivalent and acceptable. 